the Edwardian age began over 100 years ago under Edward VII, sovereign of the British Empire, a kingdom on which the sun never set. It symbolized the victory of man over nature and the elements. This era provided the backdrop for a dinner party given by Lord William Peary, where the idea for the world's largest and most luxurious steamship was first mentioned. Thomas Andrews would design her. Alexander Carlyle would build her. She ruled the ocean. With 66,000 tons in motion, she became the largest moving object ever built by man. Her passenger list included the world's most wealthy and those from the poorest villages seeking a better life. The Titanic was the queen of the sea for nearly six days. I'm glad I don't remember any more than I do because I think, it, I think I would dream about it or something, but I have never dreamed about the Titanic. It's been my life story all my life. Since I was a little girl, I remember if I'd play outside and somebody would come walking by, they would point at me. They'd whisper about me, and I wondered why they were whispering about me. And it's been the story of my life, all my life. And I'm 87 years old, and it's still with me. They insisted that Mom come up to Elgin. They had a Rialto theater at one time. So all she had to do was carry me and Harold walk on the stage so everybody could see what we looked like. Well, my mother was living in St. Charles, and she'd come here from Finland. She received word that her father was dying and he wanted her to come back so he could see her. So we took the trip back to fi uh, Finland. Before we got there, he died. We went on to Finland to see my grandmother then. While we were there, two girls came wanted to know if they could travel with us. They were em emigrating to this country and they, they didn't want to go by themselves, so they asked Mom if, she, if they could travel with us. Mom agreed, and so we all started off. And on our return trip, that's when I got on the Titanic. My mother, brother, and I. And there was a lot of Swedish people aboard. I don't know where they picked them all up at. We left Southampton, and that's when they started for the state. We took the boat train down there and got tickets on the Titanic. The Titanic was originally sailing half full until other ships had their passengers diverted to her because of the National Coal Strike. Dozens of individuals had documented foreboding dreams about the great ocean liner. In another incident, after wiring for permission to stay aboard when his passage would be paid by a millionaire, Father Francis Brown received the following response, get off that ship. Captain E.J. Smith had had prior sailing mishaps on the sister ship Olympic before helming the Titanic. Ironically, spiritualist author William Stead wrote about a fictitious vessel that strikes an iceberg and sinks with great loss of life. Aboard the Titanic, when she sunk, was William Stead. Fires reported later in the Titanic's coal bunker supposedly weakened her hull, which was further devastated by the iceberg on April 14th during the maiden voyage. We were all in our cabin. My brother was sound asleep. We'd retired for the night. Mom, she hadn't gone to bed yet. Said she felt the full impact. Went out to see what was going on. And the impact 
threw him. It was so hard that it threw my brother out on the cabin floor. And there was a lot of commotion outside the cabin. We were way down in the front of the ship. So we felt the full impact when the ship struck that iceberg. My brother was thrown out onto the cabin floor. He was sound asleep in his bunk. There was a lot of commotion out outside the cabin, so the women went out to see what was going on. And there was ice all over the ship on the floor. There was ice all over the deck. They were kicking it around and having a lot of fun. And an officer came down and told everybody to get back to the cabins. We'll be moving along shortly. But that didn't happen. Dining room steward came and rapped on the door, told us to get our coats on and hurry. The ship is sinking. I don't know whether he lived or not. His name was John Hart. He was our dining room steward. Missing from the list of notables who would perish on this night was heavyweight boxing champion Jack Johnson. Along with his wife, Etta Durier, the interracial couple had been denied booking first class during the maiden voyage. The LaRouche family were Haitian immigrants traveling from France, where husband Joseph had been schooled. He was a descendant of the upper class. The lineage began in the 17th century, and his uncle was the president of Haiti. Various languages were represented on the Titanic, as were diverse nationalities. When the disaster occurred, these passengers were doomed or saved, depending on their exact location at the time of the collision. There was no plan of mass exit for anyone in third class. There were no exit signs that directed individuals to safety and health laws had mandated gated segregation of steerage occupants from anywhere else on the ship. By the time these barriers were removed, if they were at all, it was too late for anyone below decks to be saved. If there had been a fire on the ship, the loss of life likely would have been as great due to the fact that Titanic's plans were altered for aesthetic purposes, reducing the number of lifeboats from 64, enough for all on board, to 32, to 16. One can only imagine the futile acts of desperation that occurred in the bowels of this liner as those who were going to die realized their fate. And my brother never talked about it. He was four years old. He never said a word about the Titanic. He said, that's something to forget. That was his attitude. He didn't want to have any part of it. He said, that's something to forget. And he was four, so he must have had memories of it. I do recall one thing, though. It was seeing all the heads in the water and the lifeboat looking down. As we were, I was passed to the officer in the lifeboat. I looked down, and, and then there was a lot of screaming and yelling, and it, it was it was terrifying for somebody as young as I was. There weren't enough lifeboats for that many people. Nowadays, they're well equipped, but not then. Everybody felt so safe because it was unsinkable. They, they didn't want to get into the lifeboats, the first people. I, mean, I bet a lot of them were sleeping in their cabin. And one officer had a gun in his hand, but he wasn't pointing it at, at anybody. He pointed it up in the air, fired it several times, just to keep the crowd back. They all knew that there was the last lifeboat. They either got on it or they went down with it. Then there were two girls from Sweden that were traveling with us and one of them went down with a ship. Ellen Broth, E-L-I-N, 
B-R-A-F. There was a lot of screaming and yelling and everybody wanting to get on that last lifeboat. So they had to hold them back. I don't know how we were ever saved. It must have been horrible when that water came in. I saw that in the movie. I Look how that water spread all over that ship. Captain can't save himself. He's got to stay with his ship. That was his attitude, and he stayed with the ship. He went down with the ship. Quite a few children went down with the ship. Mm -hmm. Unsinkable, unsinkable. That's when they boarded the thing they were getting on the ship. They kept talking about it being unsinkable. They just took it for granted. They shouldn't have pre... What do you call it? Predestined that it would happen, huh? saying to myself, I was there, I was there. That's what mom told me, things like that. Just, I don't know. I haven't been able to find myself on there. It's just some old story that's attached to me and nobody paid any attention to it. <laughs> just people like you. Mr. Schumann, thank you so much. You're welcome.